Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'd like to thank um, the fabulous Barbara Cullen, our Director of Small Business Victoria. Welcome, Barbara, for joining us today. Hello. Sparza Australia has been advocating since the beginning of the pandemic across all levels of government across Australia and New Zealand around the professional nature of our trades, whether it be construction, install, retail service, supply manufacture, on COVID safe practices and um, the importance around contactless service and um, the importance of swimming pools and spas in the backyards around the health wellness um, of our community. Um, it's a big part of who we are, uh, one of our major um, promotion and growth facilities or and objectives for our organisation is around the health and wellness that our industry provides. With so many Victorian homes currently um, with pools and spas, we obviously raised our concerns with you uh, a week or so ago or over the last several weeks and you graciously passed on all of those concerns across to the Chief Health Officer of Victoria, um, Brett Sutton, and the relevant committee members. And we thank you very much for the interaction and the engagement you've had um, with Sparza. We really want to take this time to thank you for making more opportunity and the time to have a listen to our members' questions and um, have the opportunity to engage more with our industry because we know it's a busy time for someone in your position. So we'd love to hear your views on where we are currently and what a future direction would look like and anything else you can comment on. So um, over to you, Barbara. Thanks, Feroz. And I'll just share my screen, which is not showing. There, yeah, this one. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Um, can you see that screen yet? Uh, no, yeah. maybe not. Oh, okay, I'll try again. Sorry, it's not coming up as there it is. An option, so you can see that. And I will just go back to the beginning. And there we are. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. I'm going to talk to you um, pretty much about the support that uh, the Victorian government is providing for business owners and operators and um, to help you get through the pandemic uh, and to um, come out the other side uh, uh, resilient uh, and uh, ready to take advantage of uh, what I expect will be a, um, a pretty pretty um, interesting time of uh, uh, growth for businesses because we'll, there'll be a lot of pent-up demand. So I'll start. Uh, everything we do in Small Business Victoria from a support perspective is available on the Business Victoria website. And this is just a, a shot of the front page. Um, of the website, but you can get into the information in the website in a myriad of ways. You just uh, do go into a search engine and type your question or type your issue, and it will probably give you an option to um, access information on the Business Victoria website on a particular page. But on the home page, we've got some tiles that have the um, current uh, support um Sort of categories, I suppose they are. Um, uh, so it's got there. You can see the stage four restrictions uh, and the new requirements about COVID safe plans. It's got the, the article about the face coverings and then some information about the latest business support package, and then a further tile about the um, expansion fund there as well. And if you scroll down on that page, of course, there's other tiles that take you to other parts of the website. Um, so, as I say, a good place to start is the uh, latest updates page that will list all the any new restrictions or hopefully in a couple of weeks easing of restrictions, uh, any support that's available. Um, more recently, there were some supports announced about um, uh, hospitality businesses. They were, as you would imagine, some of the um, earliest uh, casualties, I guess, of businesses in the in the um, the pandemic back in February, the um, hospitality businesses were being impacted, um, it seems like a, a lifetime ago, actually, in terms of uh, restaurants were not being patronised and then um, festivals and, and um, 
visitor economy type of businesses who had had to cancel their entire programs. Uh, so there were some supports of, um, made available more recently then to um, hospitality businesses. We've also got the Commercial Landlord Hardship Fund, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, that's a good page to have a look at So and to keep tabs on um, for updates there when there are announcements. As you'd be very familiar there with is the COVID Safe Plan. So we have uh, a page um, there that has the business information to business website. So um, pretty much everything on the website is about um, current information for businesses plus ongoing programs uh, that have been in place for a while to help you with your business um, plans and, and to develop um, a resilient business. So as you can see, we have these aqua tiles now, which is, you relate to aqua tiles, it's a uh, resonant of swimming pools, um, but it's a lovely colour. It jumps out from the page and uh, is easily noticeable to provide uh, different click-through um, subject matters there. Uh, this part all about the COVID safe plans and for those particularly high-risk um, industries that have been identified, usually around food production um, there. They've got to do uh, a different type of plan for high risk industries, but the COVID safe plans, um, there's a lot of FAQs and we add to those FAQs from time to time as, as issues are clarified or if um, uh, further detail is required. It talks about those um, reduction, often it's a reduction of a third of staff um, in, in uh, workplace settings if people are permitted to work um, or businesses are in a permitted category. Um, then there's those details about who can who can uh, work it on site, and it's generally not open. Well, they would be not open for um, for customers, but it's to do often. It's sort of click and collect type of um, services. So there's a more detail there on the website. Uh, you can drill down into those tiles to get the um, restrictions and the information about the the COVID safe plans. There are templates to complete as you would probably see um, and be aware of the templates to complete. There's also some model answers about um, uh, what sort of information is being sought for the COVID safe plans. Um, I think we're finding too that there's a lot of businesses who probably not your membership in Sparza but um, who aren't as regulated as um, as some and you would have you know you've obviously got all your safety um, checks with the um, uh, chemicals and things that you deal with and the the, um, the areas that you, you're working in around schools and paths, sorry, pools and spas, um, that uh, you're used to certain guidelines and, and requirements. We find that uh, some, some industry sectors don't have a lot of regulation around them and so if, um, completing a, a, a COVID safe plan can be um, quite a, an onerous task for them as well because they're not quite sure of the sorts of information that they have to provide and uh, they look for guidance there. So we've got some model answers in some of the areas. Barbara, I'll, also, I'll just yes. post yeah. a question there. You, you, you're very right in, in highlighting, we've talked about mm. our industry. Uh, mm. well, I know your spirit has spent some more time talking about our industry. You're absolutely correct. We are quite regulated as an mm. industry. Our builders are licensed um, as are, are, are many of our technicians, yep. uh, as well as qualified. So the completion of, of you know, this style of, of plan um, is not unusual for businesses mm. in our trades because they're going yep. to do toolbox meetings, they understand workplace health and safety, we are a regulated industry. And so following the standard model um, has been, you know, from the get-go, um, in the first wave of COVID and now, uh, the current one in Victoria, and we've had a lot of learnings from our New Zealand um, cousins when, when they went through the same issue. So um, following the process has been uh, uh, great to see across our membership. There's been very mm. proactive nature. Um, I suppose the question they've got is, is also how do we get, um, I suppose, support cut through um, recommendations because our industry is um, you know, dealing with sanitation, you know, going into backyards, mm. etc., is there any movement or process that we can do because we are contactless in the backyard, um, we use mm. 
scale um, construction um, also in the backyard? Is there any understanding from the government mm. fee that our industry, although fits into the big buckets of construction and service, that we can mm. you know, um, get some understanding or some consideration that you know, as a professional trade that we can you know, trade through whatever's next? Um, the, I, I'm, I, the more I speak with you, Spiros, uh, the, the more I'm aware of those of the regulatory um, uh, frameworks that you do operate under. So what I will do uh, this afternoon is I will contact my colleagues in the industry kind of coordination area of our department to request a, um, a, a meeting with yourselves and, and the departments and perhaps the Department of Health and Human Services representative. It's not a decision-making forum, but it's an opportunity for you to um, provide that that um, clarification to uh, the Department of Health and Human Services and our, our industry department who ad act as advocates for business businesses, really, where the economic development agency and where the sort of business-friendly part of government um, uh, but it's a it's an opportunity. I'll seek that opportunity for you to make that um, to have that forum. I think, and uh, it's a it's a sort of a meeting just with um, Esparza and and the departments. So I'll I'll look for that this afternoon um, and see if I can set something up for maybe next week. No, so, really so that you can make your case there because I think um, I'm being quite aware that uh, that you have got this quite high compliance. Um, Requirements in in your organisation in your sector. So um, we'll see what we can do. We do have a question from the from the um, from the members. It's along these lines. Mm. We're often we're um, we're unfortunately uh, often um, uh, forgotten about as a small industry. Um, mm. we, we didn't have our own qualifications. We weren't a national body for many years. So often we're mm. to just construction or just retail or even full clean. Yep. Um, but um, we do see some incongruency in the marketplace where we've got a question from Sean uh, around why councils are still allowed to service their pools, whereas our service technicians can't go and service those pools. And mm. it's just being able to get cut through and obviously working with people yep. like yourself, for the government to understand that we do have a professional trade network um, and they yep. um, you know, deliver this service uh, and yep. we should be dumped into things like cleaners, et cetera. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a great point. And I will, that's that that's the sort of clarification that um, would need to be made to the Department of Health and Human Services for them to take back. So, it, as I said, it wouldn't be a decision-making forum. It would just be an opportunity for SPASA to present um, the case for its members in terms of these are the issues, this is how we are regulated. And I think that's a really key point um, that you're, that your members are not pool cleaners and they're definitely um, technicians and they are definitely um, in the construction sector, but they're they're part of you would you would um, explain who your regulator is, those sorts of things, and then those issues are taken back to um, the chief health officer, basically for you know, as, basically as, a, some a decision. <laughs> your um your point before of you're the um the business friendly part of government, and I think it's a, it's a mm. great a great tagline. Um, mm. We do have a question from, from Eric around um, swim schools that haven't been able to receive or have not yet received their initial business grant. Is that something that goes through your office? It, it can. Yes, I can take that up too. Um, there's a... Um uh, there were yes, so there's a there's a bit of an escalation point in our team in our um, department, and I can if you've got some details, they can be emailed through to me. That's fine, you know, the application number and things like that. Um, so I can I can um, add, sort of pursue that as well for you. So Eric, if you'd like to forward them through to me, I, I'm I'm happy to yeah. uh, on forward that. And I think, um, Spiros here, Barbara, I think that um, I, we can see through the daily updates of all the websites that government mm. are, are scrambling to provide as much information as possible yep. uh, in a timely way. And the, the, it, it, we're grateful that, uh, that through you um, and setting up this meeting with Sparza Australia and the ministry that uh, we can actually articulate Again, uh, our regulated industry, uh, and give mm. them uh, as a niche industry, give them a better insight as to what we do, how we operate, what protection measures are in place, because um, 
like a number of industries, there seems to be uh, some inequity, rightly or wrongly. But I think given the opportunity to highlight uh, our distinctive differences and our already heavily compliant um, control measures mm. to comply with, it'll give some, um, I guess, some comfort uh, to government that um, uh, when we're out in the field, uh, there is nothing to worry about. Mm. Okay. I'll do that. Um, so shall I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so, and, and everything you've just said is, is quite interesting because our sector guidance that probably would cover your um, the swimming pool and spa um, constructors and, and um, uh, um, sort of... Uh, um Sorry? And service technicians. And service technicians, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, it, it really, it's... You know, for us, it, it looks like this on the surface. It's construction sector. So you would be very familiar, your members would be very familiar with the um, guidance for construction sector and how you fit into that, I guess. Um, we've got some other, um, so there's lots of FAQs on the website. Um, I hope your members are, are familiar with them um, and uh, I'll just keep going. Um, so on the website, there's also a um, virtual agent that you can type questions into and it will find information for you on the website and it's one of those those um, machine learning uh, applications that the more questions you ask it the better it gets so at finding information as well so um, if you if you have a moment you can ask it a question and improve its uh, intelligence at the same time uh, but there's also other information on the the pages about um, as uh, one of the members pointed out the financial support as well so we've got a number of uh, grant programs for specific sectors or um, a general one called the business support fund this is an expansion that started so there was a, a an initial round of the business support fund that had a ten thousand dollar grant went to about 76 i think seventy six thousand businesses got that grant and then when it closed on the first of june um after there was a, a bit of a lag. Then the new restrictions for Metropolitan Melbourne and Mitchellshire were announced, and so a new fund of five thousand dollars was announced. And then that um, that changed when the stage four came in. So some um, it became a five thousand dollars plus a five thousand dollars. So another ten thousand dollar grant was announced or extended, I suppose, um, and that was for Metropolitan Melbourne and um, Regional Victoria uh, businesses are eligible for a $5,000 grant. Um, generally, if businesses were eligible for the first fund, um, they would be eligible for the second as well. Um, but as, as I said, if you have um, put in an application and haven't heard, if you could email your details through, um, including any correspondence you've had from the the department or the fund um, about that, um, I can I can um, pursue it through the department. Uh, next, we've got uh, so hospitality grants. So if someone in your family or your friends uh, are in the hospitality sector, there's a couple of grants. One's for the CBD small hospitality, you know, cafes and small restaurants. Um, uh, for those businesses and then because it's pretty quiet here, I actually live on the edge of the CBD and it's extremely quiet, uh, no no traffic, no people around, although I can somehow hear a dog barking right now. <laughs> um, there's uh, And then there's a, um, a hospitality business grant program for larger um, restaurants uh, as well with um, turnover, payroll turnover of um, 3 to $10 million. And there's a bit more. We've got all that um, support now on one page as well. There's the Commercial Landlord Hardship Fund, which is part of the Commercial Tenancy Relief Scheme. Uh, you may be aware the Commercial Tenancy Relief Scheme is about um, some principles of uh, fair negotiations and uh, agreements between landlords and tenants uh, to help the help businesses, uh, the tenants, through this current period of the pandemic and to um, you know, so that the landlords have a tenant uh, at the end of all of this. Um, so it's about uh, negotiating some uh, fair rent relief there, which is a combination of waiver, which is rent foregone, and 
uh, deferral, which is rent that will be repaid over uh, about 24 months at the end of the pandemic or at the end of the, the scheme. The government announced last week the, an extension to this scheme. The intention is that it was due to end on the 29th of September this year, um, having run for six months, but the intention of the government is now to extend the scheme to the 31st of December this year. That means um, that, uh, that that negotiation between landlord and tenant will continue to the end of the year. And also the government had, intends to introduce um, a proportionality principle, which means that the the negotiation is based on the decline of the tenant's turnover um, and a, um, there's a proportion of the um, that that is waiver and um, deferred rent. And there's lots of information about that on the website. The Landlord Hardship Fund is actually targeting um, um, individuals and um, joint owners of private of commercial property who are private owners. They're not uh, commercial entities. They're not incorporated entities. And so this is to help them provide the relief really to their tenant um, because we appreciate that it's um, very difficult for some people who um, have invested in commercial property and will um, have to provide. They're obliged to provide the relief, but it's a difficult thing because that's their livelihood um, that they're giving away basically some of it in deferred rent, but which they will get back in time, but some of it is also in uh, waived rent, which is foregone. Um, so there's quite a bit of information there, and it's a $3,000 grant, which is a per eligible tenancy. So it goes, the money goes to the landlord, but but it's to as a as a part of an offset um, to the relief that they're providing to their tenants. We also have some. Um, local manufacturing lists on, um, available, whether it's um, for businesses who would like to purchase um, personal protective equipment or and medical supplies, um, such as gowns and things, um, or whether businesses are manufacturing those items. Um, we're very aware and government has um, uh, supported some businesses to uh, pivot their uh, manufacturing ca capabilities to actually change to PPE and uh, and gowns and medical supplies, um, whether they're uh, um, uh, sort of clothing manufacturers or um, actual PPE suppliers. It, it seems that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we became aware that there was only one business um, in Victoria that was manufacturing ventilators, for instance, and they were in... Um, Shepparton. Uh, and so now we've got a couple of lists that the government um, has established, um, like directories, so that if you're looking for the PPE, you can source through the lists, or if you want to go on the lists as a supplier, um, that's possible too. And there's a, a there's a process to follow there. We've had a um, oh. we've had a couple of our suppliers who've been able to um, to utilise. Great. Us. So um, that's really most, good. Um, yeah. Most of our members are obviously in construction and retail. So um, yes. For the, yeah. uh, for the sake of time, we'll uh, we'll keep moving on. Yep. That's okay. Later. Okay. Okay. Um, and some supports that we've built in to help business owners who are um, perhaps have some um, downtime or they're quiet, they're um, working on their business, but they might not be actually um, running the business. You know. Um, providing the services or goods at the at the moment. So we've developed this website called Upskill My Business and it's for business owners. And it is free short courses from universities and industry associations to help um, build your capabilities. So if there's a, something that you've always wanted to do, if you had always wanted to have a bit of conversation with your accountant or your lawyer um, or um, one of those um, professional supports that you need to use from time to time um, or should regularly. Um, you There are sort of bookkeeping or accounting short courses that you can do uh, for free in this time and um, that will help you um, have a better conversation and be a bit more aware of the sorts of things that your accountant is looking for in your business or talking to you about um, or there's lots of other things there's um, there's lots of programs about digitizing your business or your you know creating a website um, doing marketing and communications HR if there's governance things that you want to learn about innovation um, lots and lots of different topics that um, are available there 
um, I encourage you to explore that website. It's been very successful. Uh, I think we launched it in about June and it has had about almost 30,000 um, people uh, doing some of the short courses and things like that. So it's, it's a great opportunity. Barbara, if I can just um, a for a moment. Um, yes. Back to Upschool Victoria. We've actually yeah, proactively yep. um, written um, to um, Upskill um, and um, uh, we're, we're waiting to hear back as to how we can participate in great. this very important okay. initiative. So um, if you've got any influence or uh, oversight into that area, we would love to hear back. Okay. I'll follow that one up too. Okay. Thank, that's great. Uh, um, a good way to stay in touch is also we have a fortnightly newsletter, the Business Victoria update that you can subscribe to on the website. Um, we actually send it out a little bit more regularly. I think it's sometimes it's each week uh, when there are big announcements coming and um, or happening new grants and things like that. We'll send out a special newsletter as well. But it's a great way to stay across all the announcements, and also maybe to tell some of your stories. Uh, we're always looking for content. So if there's something in particular that you would like to um, to see, have a look at the newsletter. And um, you know, if there's if there's good stories that your members have to tell, I'm happy to shepherd those through um, to the digital team and uh, and see what we can do about telling um, stories from Sparza members as well about uh, how you're coping at the moment, uh, um, what what are the sort of um, positives. You talk really um, clearly about the, the the benefits of having pools in your backyard and, and spas and, and just the sort of health benefits to Victorians there and I think it's a really great story that um, possibly, you know, is not heard um, very often. I think we take them for granted uh, a lot of the time. So um, happy to talk to you further about that as well. Uh, we've also got, um, if you uh, tender to the Victorian Government for Services, we run a winning government business workshop uh, that we can tailor as well. Uh, it's on the Buying for Victoria website as well, which is the procurement website for the whole of Victorian Government, so not just our department but all the agencies and, and departments where you can um, uh, sign up for to be alerted to tenders and um get those notifications, but the, the workshop is also a good way of um, understanding how government procures and the various policies that need to be ticked off a lot of the time as well um, and be um, yeah, included in your um, tender documents. And this last slide is about how to stay in touch. So we've got social media, we've, have, um, we've got the Business Victoria subscription there, but there's a few couple of other newsletters too. One is about exporting um uh, so you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, uh, all that sort of things. Or you can call us on the Business Victoria hotline. So that's that's it from me. I will Just a couple stop of questions, sharing. Barbara. Thank yeah. you very much for um, taking us through, um, I guess, uh, an evolving um, website. Mm. As I say, it's evolving on a daily basis. Mm. Um, uh, we've just got a couple of questions that are coming through here, if we can put them to you if, I, if, you, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, one is, um, is there, because as an industry we, we are in essence shut down and there's, um, uh, there, are, uh, there will be a number of pools that actually will deteriorate over time uh, mm. and there potentially will be um, consequential costs as a consequence of them not operating and not being serviced. Um, is there any discussion within Govern on uh, how uh, homeowners, pool owners that have been unable to maintain their swimming pools and spas during this time may be able to seek some recompense in terms of getting them now um, rectified? When um, I, I heard part of that, a lot of that question. I heard most of it, I think. And um, at the moment, I've, it's, I'm not aware of any of those sorts of discussions um, going on. So it's probably not our department's remit. So, um, again, that would be something that you might want to raise at a, at a forum that I'm, um, I'll follow up on. Fantastic. Uh, one more question um, as we're getting a few more come through. But one question is uh, restrictions are due to um, uh, stage four restrictions are due to expire on the 13th of September. Is there any discussion as to or any feedback that you can share with this group in so far as 
Um, what does that look like? Uh, will that move to a complete removal of stage four or will there be a reduction to stage three when the, after the 13th? Um, I know as much as you do on this one and um, I think that go, that's across the board. Um, I think if you uh, watch the Premier's press conferences or it's, prob it's probably at those conferences where there's a bit of an exchange with the media people in the room, um, uh, it's it's a day-by-day -day assessment uh, and then there's the sort of uh, the longitudinal modelling also that the Department of Health and Human Services is doing. Um, it's, it's uh, I think, uh, the closer we get to the, the 13th of September, um, I'm feeling reasonably encouraged, but I have no idea what the next stage is. And um, we are certainly um, encouraging people to plan for their recovery, but in terms of when that actually hits the, hits the sort of start button, um, I, I couldn't say. Um, I don't, you know, we don't have those sorts of discussions. We are... Um, still you know two weeks to go um so it's still very much about response for us but it's also um um uh, sort of uh you know in in everybody's mind to um encourage planning for what will happen in the future but um given where we've come from i'm i'm sort of thinking that i i uh i don't see us you know going straight to um i i you know to a sort of everything's off you know so it's i stage. would imagine it's a I, I think it's a staged recovery wouldn't you um and a stage opening up um given the cautious nature of um i think uh, the chief health officer you can see it every day um and yeah it will, Barbara, it, it, it will be but i don't know what those stages are so <laughs> and that, i suppose and that's that's what we've been lobbying for with yourself and, and others on yeah. Um, as as things mm. are starting to open up, we understand the government doesn't have um, a pallet at the moment to to make any significant changes on the current situation. But you know, as as we get closer to September thirteenth, we mm. want to really highlight to you all and sundry that our industry can operate in the backyard from a contactless point of view. We aren't household res um, uh, renovations. Our service people, you know, and our retail do operate contact contactlessly at the moment. Mm. And I suppose it's it's we've been um, uh, I suppose in many ways uh, not understood by some levels of government. Obviously, we're going a long way to, to fixing that by having these sort of meetings with yourself and others. Mm. But if we can keep working with um, you know groups like yourself, you know, um, Victorian small business, mm. to be able to get our point across where our professional trades are responsible and can operate in a contactless fashion in our construction, retail, service, and supply model. Uh, I think that'll go a long way should um, COVID obviously um, um, keep extending out because uh, the last thing we want is, is small business to stop, especially uh, with Father's Day only a very short period of time. It's a, a significant day for us in the industry. It's, um, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a fun day around Father's Day, but what it actually really means for us is around that time frame, a lot of pools go green. Um, the ground temperature changes and our industry goes from being um, busy to very excited for a period of time. Mm. And the last thing we want um, is 400,000 pools to go green um, mm. and that cost and burden and unsafe nature of that in Victoria to go forward. So um, we know you're going to put that forward to, um, to, yep. to the other parties. We've already had that conversation. Um, and I hope that you can put that forward too. So that's my that's my mm. takeout from today is to follow up and um, uh, facilitate a forum for you to be able to make, make that um, uh, business case, I suppose. Uh, Barbara, Lindsay and I uh, and Spaza Australia look very much forward to, um, I guess, engaging and being engaged um, and representing um, uh, Victorians, um, not just the community, but also our industry. Um, uh, are there any other questions that, uh, um, if you've got any last questions, please forward them through. Lindsay, before we close up, would you like something to say? I think we've covered most of it. I mean, um, you know, this conversation with Barbara is a really good example, I suppose, of the fantastic conversations we have had with government. Um, it is a, you know, we've all heard it a hundred times, an unprecedented situation. Um, yeah. And, you know, to be able to have this sort of conversation gives everyone a, a, a physical example of what you and I experience almost on a daily basis across um, the regions that we work with. Is everybody wants this to work. Um, yeah. And I suppose having an organisation 
um, where we're promoting, you know, qualified tradespeople and and good solid business practices uh, will will put us in good stead um, for the next time, um, and obviously for a couple of weeks' time as well. So we'll pass on any questions to yourself that are relevant around small business, um, and obviously Spiros and I will continue to advocate. That's great. For us all, all groups. Um, is there anything you want to end with, Barbara? No, I, that's fine. Look, I've really appreciated the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, uh, I, you, you're very good advocates for your members and for the um, sort of health benefits that swimming pools and spas bring to Victorians. So, yeah, more power to you. So thank you very much, Barbara. Much appreciated. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Lindsay, our CEO, for participating and helping me chair this very important communication. Barbara, we'll stay in touch, and obviously we look forward mm. to um, hearing uh, about our involvement on uh, the forum as well as more on um, upskilling Victoria and how we can participate, yeah. not only as a registered training organisation uh, but also as a peak industry body. Thank you again. Um, we look forward to speaking again soon. Great. Thank you for the invitation. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.